Don't get me wrong. Cars emitting flames is one of the most beautiful things I've ever seen. Besides my girlfriend. But have you ever stopped to try and figure out why cars shoot flames and how? Well, I suppose that's why you're here. Welcome to Rockers Drive Club. If you enjoyed these videos, make sure you hit that subscribe button. There are multiple ways to turn your car into a firebender. But first, let's talk about why this happens. Because it's actually pretty simple. Unburnt fuel can travel through your exhaust system. This unburnt fuel is met by something that ignites it. When a car's engine has too much unburnt fuel, it identifies as being rich. I wish I could do that. I just call it being gassy. The primary way to get flames, however, is to get a high flow exhaust system or straight piping it by deleting your catalytic converter, resonator, and muffler. The catalytic converter being the main way of prohibiting fire and other emissions in most cars. Removing or replacing these things alone should add pops and bangs to almost any car, especially those with forced induction. However, this will most likely make your car sound like garbage. Just because it's loud does not mean it sounds good. It honestly gives car enthusiasts a bad image when loud cars sound like poop. Okay, well, I deleted all of those things anyway and my car pops but no flames. If you're straight piped and can't shoot flames, it's honestly because you either haven't gotten the exhaust hot enough, or your car isn't rich enough or is running lean. Running lean is when the car is getting more air than fuel. Either way, it's time to get your car tuned. The most popular map being an overrun tune, or as it's popularly known as, pops and bang tune. Some cars that are notorious for getting this tune are anything with a VQ35, a 37, BMW, and Mercedes. These brands have the most people wanting pops and bangs, so that's to be expected. However, most cars can shoot flames with the right parts and tune. Is there any performance advantages for cars shooting flames? With a simple pop and bang tune on a naturally aspirated engine, no. But for cars that are tuning for or adding anti-lag, boost will hit noticeably sooner. Anti-lag is a system that provides a way of eliminating turbo lag. Turbo lag happens due to the exhaust gases having to spin a turbine, leaving a delay in power. It's essentially the time it takes from when you step on the accelerator and the turbine starts spinning. However, anti-lag intentionally keeps combustion happening within the turbo housing, separate from the engine. This allows the turbine to keep spinning even while you're off throttle. As a result of all of this, you will have very little, if any, turbo lag. But also, you still get to put on the light show. So is two-stepping the same thing as anti-lag? You can argue that in a car that is running forced induction, two-stepping can help build some boost. However, two-stepping is a form of launch control. Think of it this way. Anti-lag works while the car is moving and while it's stopped, whereas two-stepping has to be stationary. Two-step is essentially a second rev limiter. Instead of cutting fuel, it cuts ignition, which allows unburnt fuel to enter the exhaust manifold. Two-step limiters are usually connected to your speed sensor so that it won't activate while you're driving. You'd use this to get optimal grip and power from a dig. Dig means stationary or not moving. But then there's something called three-step. Essentially, this adds a third rev limiter so that you can perform a no-lift shift. A no-lift shift means your foot can stay planted on the throttle while you press in the clutch to shift gears. The third limiter would be placed strategically so that it wouldn't damage the engine, but also keep you in the power band and in full boost if there's forced induction.
And with all of these things, two-step competitions were born. As I mentioned, I'm all for the light show, but I'm also more about the driving experience. These competitions to me seem like they're all about who's loudest. Think and comment some ways that these can help you become a better driver, or how you could even develop a new system to make more power efficiently. Thanks for watching.